Hi, this is Congressman Tom Cole. This is another one of our weekly congressional chats. Uh, Congress has actually been uh, pretty busy this week. Uh, we finished uh, six appropriations bills in a single package, but multiple amendments to that uh, voted no. I voted no largely because uh, the Democrats decided to break the budget agreement that they made last year and added an additional $240 billion in so-called emergency spending that was above uh, last year's uh, 2019 budget agreement. They also added a lot of what are called partisan riders, that is uh, legislation which actually shouldn't go through the Appropriations Committee uh, to various appropriations bills uh, that range everything from Title X planning to um, you know, things that uh, threatened uh, various uh, Second Amendment rights and uh, a variety of efforts on the part of the Democrats to keep the president from uh, working on the southern border wall and uh, to limit the administration in a variety of areas. Now, none of these things are going to become law because the Republican Senate will never accept them. So in, in a sense, this week uh, was an exercise in futility. But these vehicles do provide uh, the vehicle that you go into conference with. That is, once the Senate passes its appropriations bills, uh, we start negotiating from that. And these bills will change, hopefully, for the better. Uh, but certainly, uh, none of them were good enough, in my opinion, to, to vote for. Uh, you'll also be reading a lot this week uh, about the uh, discussions on a fifth coronavirus relief package. That's underway right now. The Democrats passed their basic bill a couple of months ago in late May. Uh, Republicans wanted to wait for a while to see how the economy was doing. I think the conclusion is right now that uh, it needs uh, another shot in the arm uh, because of the additional outbreaks and the severity of the economic disruption. But a lot of that depends on what it is. Uh, the Senate uh, Republicans have put together a, a bill working with the president. It's about a trillion dollars, an extraordinarily large bill. The Democratic bill is $3.5 trillion. So there's quite a bit of difference between them. Some areas of overlap, that is incentives to rehire people, uh, efforts to help uh, small business to exp uh, extend the uh, Paycheck Protection Program. Uh, so hopefully these things will get uh, sorted out between negotiations are underway now between the president, the Senate leadership, and the House leadership. Uh, but um, uh, as of yet, uh, no, no indication of exactly what the package will be and when we'll actually vote on it, but I'll keep you posted on that. Last thing that I want to talk about this week was something that actually brought Congress together rather than tore it apart, and that's the uh, death and uh, the various, uh, the funeral and, and the uh, ceremonies honoring the extraordinary John Lewis. Uh, John was a civil rights icon. As Martin Luther King used to call him, the boy from Troy, He's the last uh, person who actually spoke at the famous March on Washington in 1963. In his career, he was uh, arrested over 40 times, uh, severely beaten on a number of occasions, including very famously on the Edim, uh, Edmund Pettus Bridge uh, in Selma, Alabama on what's called Bloody Sunday back in 1965. Uh, he came to Congress in 1987. Uh, was, uh, I think, universally regarded as someone to admire. Uh, one of the nicest p people you'd ever want to meet. I always like to tell a story. Uh, the first uh, year I got here in 2003, I, uh, you draw offices as freshmen and you're at the bottom of the heap and I had a really bad room draw. I drew number 49 out of 54 new freshmen. So I was up in fifth floor cannon, which are the worst offices in, uh, for new members of Congress. And, uh, but I was just happy to have an office. And I remember a couple months into my uh, first term, a uh, staff assistant came in and said, Congressman John Lewis is in the office to see you. I knew I didn't have an appointment with him, but uh, of course, I'm very honored that he would come by. And uh, so I invited him into the office. We sat down, chatted for a second. And I said, Congressman, it's a great honor to have you here, uh, particularly given your record. Uh, why are you here? And he said, well, I actually come to this office 501 Canon, every new Congress, uh, to because this was my very first office in Congress, and I welcome whoever happens to be in this office and tell them, don't worry, you won't be here long. And he was right about that. I was only there two years. You get a better room draw, you move out of fifth floor Canon. But that's just the kind of person he was. Now, he was, uh, uh, you know, strong uh, party Democrat, uh, you know, but somebody who uh, honestly, uh, 
uh, tried to appeal to the better angels of our nature, particularly in areas of human rights and civil rights, where he was a, a lifelong leader and an icon to tens of millions of Americans and really people all over the world. And to think of his humble beginnings and his struggle, and then at the end to have three presidents of the United States deliver eulogies at his funeral and to lie in state in the rotunda of the United States Capitol uh, it tells you how extraordinary uh, his life was and how extraordinary he was as a person. Uh, and that has brought a lot of people together in reflection. So in a very difficult and divided uh, era, highly polarized uh, politics, uh, it was a good thing to see the country uh, from the left to the right, uh, from the powerful to the humble, uh, to actually come together and uh, lend, or, lend tribute, uh, give tribute to this remarkable man who uh, frankly made America a much better place. So I'm uh, thinking a lot about my friend John Lewis uh, these days and his extraordinary contribution to our country, uh, his commitment and how we all need to redouble our efforts uh, to live up to that and to remember that he always did it by preaching nonviolence, uh, by confronting evil, but doing it peacefully, uh, but always standing up for the right things for the right reasons.